Friends, welcome to this service honouring and celebrating the life of our dear friend Peter. Welcome to those who uh, have travelled a long distance to be here, the many who are watching online and those over in our hall, um, as we couldn't quite fit everyone into our little church here at St Luke's, which was Peter's spiritual home for over 50 years. I'll invite you to please sit as we begin the service by placing symbols of Peter's faith and life on his coffin. When Peter arrived in the church, we lit the Easter candle. And so we pray, light immortal, you brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. May we, with Peter and all the baptised, know the full light of your risen presence. Amen. In the waters of baptism, we died with Christ and began to walk in newness of life. May we, with Peter and all the baptised, be brought to the fulfilment of your eternal kingdom. Amen. In life, Peter was nourished by the word of God. May Christ greet us with Peter, saying, Come, blessed of my Father. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you bore our sins on the cross. May this cross be a sign to us of your love for Peter and the forgiveness of his sins. Amen. Please stand to sing our opening hymn, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say.
Grace and peace from the Lord be with you. And also with you. We have come together to thank God for the life of Peter, to mourn and honour him, to lay to rest his mortal body, and to support one another in grief. We face the certainty of our own death and judgment, yet Christians believe that those who die in Christ share eternal life with him. Therefore, in faith and hope, we turn to God, who created and sustains us all. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet will they live. And St. Paul writes, I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us pray together. Loving God, you alone are the source of life. May your life-giving spirit flow through us and fill us with compassion one for another. In our sorrow, give us the calm of your peace. Kindle our hope and let our grief give way to joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated and I invite Peter's son Andrew to offer a tribute to his life. Today we are gathered here to say goodbye to Peter Hilson, McLeod, and Belfort. Son of Sylvia and James, devoted husband to Shirley. Father. To Father Jennifer. to Andrew and Jennifer, and loving granddad to Mullaney, Jasmine, Flynn, Ashlyn, Callum, Madeline, and Jacqueline. Dad was born on the 4th of April 1941 in Kalgoorlie, living in Boulder. Growing up in Boulder, Dad had many adventures, swimming in dams, riding his bike with his dog Rusty, and playing with his mates. Dad's parents encouraged Dad to learn the piano and playing tennis as Nana and Grandad built the Boulder tennis courts and club. Dad was a cub and later a scout. When the Queen visited Kalgoorlie in 1954, Dad was selected to be flag bearer for her visit. Nana and Grandad didn't want Dad to come, become a minor and they moved to Gosnells, a suburb of Perth, attending Armadale High School. Dad enjoyed sports and was a good high jumper, being selected to compete at the regional carnival. Unfortunately, Dad fell sick with appendicitis and missed the opportunity to compete. At the time, Dad says he was regularly jumping four si foot six and the winning jump was four foot five. Who's to know if he'd win or not? He would ride his 24-inch bike everywhere. One night, he said he was riding past the outdoor movie, watching the screen, and he rode into the back of a truck that was parked, knocking himself out. As Jennifer said, you used to often say that um, he had contributed the concussion to his silliness. <laughs> Dad had a love for metalwork at school, and he started a five-year apprenticeship in fitting and turning at Forward Downs. The workshop foreman advised Dad to enrol in mechanical engineering. For the five years, Dad got up at 4.30, rode his bike to the train, the train to work, worked, went to college, and at night before heading home into, the, into bed by 11, getting up again at 4.30 to do it all over again the following day. When Dad moved the re to the East Coast, you can imagine his frustration to find that his engineering diploma from WA wasn't recognised in New South Wales and he had to do engineering again at night. It was during his engineering class that Dad sat next to Cole Walker and they remained friends ever since. Dad certainly wasn't afraid of working hard and his dedication and determination to learn continued throughout his life. In 1963, Dad applied to BHP and drove across from Perth in his Renault Dauphine, which broke down twice and arrived in the April to start work as a maintenance fitter. 
While at BHP, he became good mates with Cyril Mosley, who, with his wife, Stella, were the matchmakers who brought Mum and Dad together. Mum and Dad... Mum thought Dad was a bit of a school kid. Dad thought Mum was a bit too old for him. Over the following weeks, they went dancing with the Mosleys and Dad became jealous when Mum was asked to dance with another man. This kicked Dad into action and after three months' romance, they, Dad proposed and they were wed five months later, moving into a flat in Merriweather. Four years later, I was born and Mum and Dad moved to Glendale. Two years later, Jennifer was born. Our old house in Glendale had the only rock letterbox in the street, made from a huge stone from the backyard. Dad used their car, a sporty, 40, a sporty Cordy 440, to drag the rock around to the front yard, standing it in the yard in a large hole he dug, and by hand he chiselled the openings in it, and it still stands today at our old house. <clears throat> Dad built and painted our Christmas gifts at time, times. One year, making a billy cart with pedals for me and a table and chairs for Jennifer. Jennifer used to have tea parties on the back porch and the table often extended the dining room seating for us kids if we had visitors. I remember Dad taking Jennifer and I to Cardiff Industrial Estate a couple of times as kids. Once to walk the railway line for balance practice and once to ride the billy cart down the hills. One, on the last ride, Dad told me not to put my feet down as he pushed me down one of the hills. The pedals on that billy cart were going that fast that I couldn't keep my feet on them. Not wearing any shoes, I put my feet down and took the skin off my feet. Mum wasn't happy with Dad. <laughs> to solve this, Dad and I took the billy cart to his work and we removed the pedals. Before we headed home, I beg, begged Dad to tow me behind the car. I promised him I wouldn't put my feet down. Mum didn't know about this. Or that one night Jennifer and I rode in the, back, in the boot of the old Valiant while we took Nana Randall home. Nana was freaking out. Mum just shook her head. <laughs> this week. While at BHP, Dad progressed from maintenance fitter to various positions throughout the plant, procurement officer, tender specialist, apprentice trainer of up to 125 apprentices and other positions. Dad moved to Alcoa as office manager and then in 1973 became the general manager of drilling engineering. When Dad started drilling engineering, there were only five staff and one week's work. Dad turned this around and diversified their work and product range, later, become, later becoming managing director, while when he left drilling engineering in 82, they had 35 staff and six months' work. During his time at Drilling Engineering, Dad manufactured his first machine and this snowballed into his own designs of hand tools, drilling rigs and the start of his rail adventure. During, Dad had equipment exported to Indonesia, Thailand, Malay, uh, sorry, Myanmar and the UK. He designed and built an underwater drilling rig that sampled off the ocean floor of, from Burwood and later presented papers to the drilling industry on this work. On his trip to Myanmar, he delivered and commissioned three Series 16 rigs. On arrival at Burma Airport, airport he was detained at gunpoint as he had taken his electric shaver with him and he was branded a spy. Fortunately, his contact, Ultin La, had been a general in the Burma Army and came to Dad's rescue. They remained friends ever since, exchanging Christmas cards until Tin La passed away. Maybe the Burma authorities knew something that we didn't. Dad told me recently, while he was at Drilling Engineering, he actually designed and manufactured a small drill for ASIO. In 1982, Dad made a decision to create Melville Engineering with Mum, starting the company in our garage in Glendale. I remember Dad working all hours perfecting his designs to make sure he could put food on the table and allowing us kids to achieve, to do the activities we enjoyed and go on a holiday every year. Early years were a struggle for them until Dad designed his spike puller. This spike puller quickly became the machine of choice of the Australian rail industry and helped propel the company to become a dominant force. One order Dad received for Queensland Rail, Mum and Dad loaded up the VW Combi with spike pullers and headed to Brisbane. With 1,300 kilo of equipment in the back, the VW on the bump stops, 
Dad said it was a slow trip and he needed about half a K to stop the thing. Along with rail equipment, people sought out Dad to build drilling rigs. One rig was taken to Antarctica, drilling ice cores for science, scientific research. He created six different models of rigs, as well as sampling systems, water pumps and casing jacks, designs we still manufacture today. Dad and Mum retired in 2007 when Natasha and I purchased the company. I often remark that I don't know if we could have done what Mum and Dad have done, creating a brand that is recognised globally. Dad's passion for flying started when he was a boy, watching and racing the de Havilland air airplanes as they took off from the Boulder Airport. I know he wanted to fly when we lived in Glendale, as he took Jennifer and I gliding, gliding up at Walkworth, but they didn't, couldn't afford it at the time. In 1988, he sat for his private pilot licence. He was student of the year, and in that same year was club champion. Although flying wasn't one of Mum's things, they did enjoy several flying safaris, one around Australia's top end and one in America where they flew along the Mississippi to New Orleans and New York past the Twin Towers and up the Hudson past the Statue of Liberty. Jennifer flew with Dad on a safari to Tasmania. Unfortunately, I didn't share Dad's passion for, for small planes and I only flew with him once. During their retirement, Mum and Dad travelled extensively around the globe and they made many new friends. They also travelled regularly with Dennis and Robin and the train group on day trips, sharing Friday night dinners with the group at Katara Bowling Club. Dad's Christian journey started when he was a child with his parents, Dad and Mum, and Dad and Mum were married at St Philip's, Waratah, in 1964. When Jennifer and I were at Sunday school here at St Luke's, Mum and Dad joined the parish and have been members for over 50 years. They have been heavily involved with the parish, holding various positions. During the renovations of the church, Dad rebuilt the, bell, rebuilt the bells and the bell tower and the frames of the two modern windows, uh, two modern stained glass windows. When Dad was younger, he used to change the lights in the roof of the church by himself. I don't know how he did it, but he'd stand a ladder which weighs some 30 kilo, I've still got the ladder, extend it, lean it against the crossbars and change the floodlights in the ceiling. Sometimes he said he was sure he had help from above. And he, did, he was doing it by himself. Crazy. Dad always lived his life the Christian way, turning the other cheek and always there to lend a hand. He always said he had, if he had a problem, he would come to church and pray and generally he found the answers. He loved to play music for the services at Jasmine Grove, Woodlands, Toronto Nursing Home and here at St Luke's and with Mel and friends. Dad was a gadget man. He always had a pocket knife, a new delivery from Amazon and five minutes story would always take an hour. He worked hard for the love of his life and their family. He was extremely proud of who we have become and what we have all achieved. We love you, Dad. We will miss you, Dad. You'll, ever, you'll never be forgotten especially when you've left us 49 pages of history. Love you, Dad, and thank you all for coming. Thank you. Now enjoy a visual tribute to Peter's life.
invite Peter's grandson, Callum, to come and lead us in Psalm 121. My help comes from the Lord. My help comes from the Lord. I lift my eyes to the hills from where my help is to come. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. My help comes from the Lord. The Lord will not allow your foot to slip. Your guardian will not sleep. See, the one who watches over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. My help comes from the Lord. It is the Lord who is your keeper. The Lord is your shelter on your right hand. So that the sun shall not strike you by day, neither shall the moon by night. My help comes from the Lord. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is the Lord who shall guard your life. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in, both now and forevermore. My help comes from Please stand to sing our hymn before the gospel, I the Lord of Sea and Sky. Oh 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also, and you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. In the name of Jesus Christ, who opens his doors to us, who is the light that shines in the darkness. Thank you, Andrew, for your wonderful tribute to your dad's life. Jennifer, thank you as well. And for that beautiful uh, photo tribute. I've never seen a photo tribute where every single photo, there's a big ear to ear grin. But that's what Peter has as, had we, as we went through every one of those photos in his life. It was a very beautiful and natural smile. And it just occurred to me that that's what we got every time we met Peter. Really beautiful, welcoming smile. And I guess that's why there is the number of people here today that there is um, the impact Peter had on the lives of not only family and friends, but community as well. We've really been privileged to have Peter as one of our elder statesmen here at St Luke's, someone who's given so much to the church over 50 years. And so we gather in gratitude for the friend and companion in faith that Peter has been. As we heard, Peter undertook many formal roles at St. Luke's, parish councillor, treasurer, treasurer, synod rep. And in my experience, he brought intelligence, vision, and a very strong opinion to most conversations. Alongside formal duties, Peter brought boundless energy to fixing anything and everything. Gates, locks, bells, computers, tables. There wasn't a problem that Peter wasn't willing to try and solve or a Bunnings he wasn't prepared to visit to solve it. As we heard, Peter built the frames for these wonderful windows back in the day and you wouldn't believe it, but just in the storm the other night, the second window along seems to have been pulled and jarred open a little bit. And I thought, oh, there's, there's a job for Peter. He, he, and, you know, we were musing that and sad that he wouldn't be here to fix them. Perhaps what I'm most grateful for, however, more than all the formal roles he undertook and his ability to fix most things was the gift that Peter gave generously and without hesitation, which was the gift of himself, his friendship, his generosity of spirit, and his living out his discipleship by seeking to love one another as Jesus commanded us to do. Two brief examples. We heard that Peter played piano and organ at a number of aged care facilities with his partner in crime, Shirley, singing beautifully from the back. And he played at Jasmine Grove and um, Toronto and Woodlands. And um, I know there are folk from Jasmine Grove here today. Peter would prepare meticulously and practice diligently for these, these services uh, in an old folks' home. He'd scan the sheet music into his iPad. I think at last count he had a thousand pieces of music there at the ready. Uh, to play what he thought the folks might like to hear. 
He brought the gift of music into the lives of people who, um, you know, particularly recently, didn't get to experience outside friendship and, and connection. And that was for sing-alongs, church services, Christmas carols. But Peter didn't just play and Shirley didn't just sing. They, they brought themselves. They sat and had a cuppa with folk. They had conversation. They shared long stories. Um, and they brought a, a bit of light into the residence day and never asked for anything in return. And at Jasmine Grove, Peter even played his, his mother's organ, um, which was donated there. Secondly, Peter would go out his way to be friendly to whoever ventured through the doors of this church. Because faith wasn't just an act of piety. Peter was a, a great prayer. He's worn a, a decent spot in the, one of the back two pews on this side. Um, I can't rem remember him missing, what, maybe one or two Sundays a year in the last six years, you know. Uh, that was important, but being a smiling, welcoming presence to newcomers and oldcomers alike was a gift that Peter had. Sometimes I'd have to tell him to sit down because we're about to start the service, but what a remarkable ministry. On reflection, what a remarkable ministry. And he would share stories, whether it would be work, flying, gardening, family or history. The morning tea here was always a marathon and never a sprint. Because story was important to Peter. Story was really important to Peter. We, we heard his story gathered around his bed a couple of weeks ago and he, he wanted to make sure we, we heard the whole breadth of his life and how it formed him and shaped him and, and how this beautiful family came to be because of the story. But he also loved the gospel story. And for that gospel story, the overarching story of God's love for us in Jesus. And so today we're invited to enter into that story as well. Father Philip read a very well-known passage from John 14, and the setting is the Last Supper. Jesus is with his friends, and knowing he would die, he sits with them to both do and say what was the most important thing for them to remember before he left. He's passing wisdom. So he broke bread with them, drank wine with them and said, when you gather, do this in remembrance of me. And that's what Peter did every Sunday here for 50 years and what we will do in a moment. Jesus washed his friends' feet to show them how to serve others. Peter was faultless in serving others. And he gave them the commandment to love one another. We've all experienced Peter's love in one way or another. But then he invites his disciples and us to broaden our imaginations about our relationship with God, our understanding of life. He wants his friends to remember this conversation later. And he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus is speaking into moments when our fear, our worry, our grief is overcoming us moments like today and he says do not be troubled trust in God because God has a bigger purpose so today in our grief in our loss Jesus doesn't just give us hope he gives us assurance assurance that through faith in his life death and resurrection he has opened up the way to eternal life for Peter and for every one of us as well. It is the idea that this mortal life is only the beginning of life in all its fullness. Jesus uses an image familiar to us, his father's house being big enough to have many rooms with a place prepared for us all. And this is an example of God's generosity and love for all his children. He says, I will come and take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the place, the way to the place where I'm going. And Thomas says, how do we know? We, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Peter navigate, navigated a truly wonderful path through his life, making a beautiful family, 
and lifelong friends, and when we look back on his life, we can see the constant presence of his Lord being his way, his truth, and his life. So it is our sure and certain hope that our dear brother Peter has found his way to his dwelling place in the love of God, where all the tears of this earthly life are wiped away, where pain and sorrow are no more, but only a heavenly banquet with choirs of angels singing the heavenly song. Rest eternal grant to Peter, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him. Let us pray. We thank you, our Father, that your Son, Jesus Christ, came to die for us. We thank you that you raised him from the dead. In a moment of silence, we thank you for the gift of life, for the life of Peter and all that he has meant to us. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We thank you for Peter's marriage to Shirley, for their love and commitment to one another, for their children and all their family. We give thanks for Peter's faith and commitment to this church. Bring us with Peter and all your faithful people to the fullness of life you promise to those who love you. Lord, in your mercy. We confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Grant us forgiveness and assure us of your love. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Strengthen us to love and obey you, that we may live the rest of our lives in following your Son and be ready when you call us to the fullness of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who mourn, especially Peter's family, for Shirley, their children, Andrew and Jennifer, for grandchildren, and for all Peter's family and friends. Be close to them now in their loss and increase their faith in your undying love. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Show your mercy to the dying, sustain them with hope and fill them with the peace and joy of your presence. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We praise you, Lord God, for your faithful servants in every age. May we, with Peter, St. Luke, our patron, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and all who have died in the faith of Christ, be brought to a joyful resurrection and the fulfillment of your eternal kingdom. Amen. Would you please stand? Friends, we are the body of Christ. His spirit is with us. The peace of the risen Lord be always with you. And also with you. From your places, just share with one another a reverent sign of peace. Peace be with you. And we'll sing our offertory hymn, Farewell We Come.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And we give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth, giver of life and conqueror of death. By his death on the cross, your Son, Jesus Christ, offered the one true sacrifice for sin, breaking the power of evil and putting death to flight. With all your saints, we give you thanks and praise. Through his resurrection from the dead, you have given us new birth into a living hope, into an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled and unfading. With all your saints, we give you thanks and praise. The joy of resurrection fills the universe, and so we join with angels and archangels, with Peter and all your faithful people, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine, and we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup and again giving you thanks he gave it to his disciples saying drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore with thanksgiving for the gift of your son. We here proclaim his passion and death and his victory over the grave. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Renew us by your Holy Spirit. Unite us in the body of your Son. And bring us with Peter and all your faithful people into the joy of your eternal kingdom, with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord, we offer our prayer and praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Please be seated. Friends, if you are a communicant member of any Christian denomination, you are welcome to share in the sacraments here at St Luke's. If you would prefer to just receive a blessing, come forward with your hands across your chest. If you would prefer to just sit and take in all that you've heard about Peter's life and the wonder of this church he enjoyed so much, you're most welcome. To the folk in the hall, Father Philip will come across and uh, offer communion to you standing in front of the television. Um, I'll stand in the middle and offer bread. 
and Alison and Reverend Sally will be on either side of me for those who wish to partake of the wine as well.
Let us pray. Lord of life and death, we thank you that in your great love you have given us this foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all your saints. Grant that this sacrament of Christ's death may be to us a comfort in affliction, a firm assurance of his resurrection, and a pledge of our inheritance in that kingdom where death and sorrow are no more but all things are made new. Amen. Friends, we've just about come to the conclusion of the service. Um, it would be remiss of me not to say that the um, sung rendition of the Lord's Prayer you heard during the reception of communion was Peter's mother, Sylvia, um, which she was recorded some years ago when she was, I think, around 70 years of age. And... Um, he very much wanted us to all hear that. At the conclusion of the service, you're warmly invited to stay for refreshments at Walls End Diggers down the road in Tyrrell Street and continue to share memories and stories of Peter's life and support one another at this time. Would you please stand? Let us entrust our brother Peter to the mercy of God. Holy and loving Father, by your mighty power you gave us life, and in your love you have given us new life in Christ Jesus. We entrust Peter to your merciful keeping in the faith of Jesus Christ, who died and rose again to save us and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit in glory forever. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life. In your keeping are all who have departed in Christ. We here commit the body of our dear brother Peter to be cremated in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who died and was buried and rose again for us, and who shall change our mortal body, that it may be like his glorious body. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to be gracious and smile upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.